guys, sorry I'm late. Oh, I can't wait to see this new week of kid life. <laughs> can't wait to see what that crazy Pastor Brandon guy does. It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Kid Life. Let's pray. Hey, you guys wanna to pray together before we get started? We can hold hands or hold pause. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you for today and all my friends that are watching here today. I pray right now that we have an awesome day learning all about your love. We thank you so much for all that you're going to do. In your name we pray. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is All right, guys, like I said yesterday, we're going to start a whole new unit, which means new games. Yes, Bryce? Are you sure, Coach? Because you know Cameron here is not good at new games. Why don't you just worry about you? Now, what we Thanks really lot, have man. to do is... You know I'm right. You remember last week, he had such a hard time with that dunce ball game that we threw into hoops. Don't you mean basketball? That's not what it's called. It's called bounce ball thrown into hoops. All right, guys, we're going to start with the relay race. Cameron, you're up first. Ready, set. Are you serious right now? Did you take a slow poke pill this morning? You see this? This is the gray hair guy from waiting for you. Hi, yes. May I order 20 pieces from you guys since I'm going to be living here in this gym for the rest of my life? Wow, did you visit the whole world three times in your run? Take it easy, man. Stop being so harsh. I want to win, bro. This next exercise needs everybody to partner up. Do you want to be my partner? Sure, bro. Just don't be so harsh with your comments. No problem. Oh, man. Look who my partner is. Cameron, I am totally taking on for the team. Anyone want to trade partners? I mean, this kid begged me to be his partner, probably because I'm so awesome at all these games. Technical foul. What do I do? All right, this next game, I'm gonna need some captains. Let's go with um, Cameron and... Cameron? Oh, come on. You want him picking teams? He can't even pick his nose. I know, I know, technical foul. But the fruit of the spirit is... What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey there kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about another fruit of the spirit, gentleness. So anytime today, you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I gotta be gentle with my words and my deeds. Too many people are harsh with their words, they say mean things to hurt people's feelings. Shame, shame. It really is a shame. When you're harsh with your words and you're mean with your actions, it doesn't represent Jesus. After all, he was gentle and you should be too. So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I gotta be gentle with my words and my deeds. And that right there is what you gotta know. This is Big Ray and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you gotta know? Hey kids, what time is it? Do you have a need for speed? Are you an adrenaline addict? Would driving a Formula One car at over 200 miles per hour still not be enough to get your heart racing? Then you've come to the right place. Because it's time for World Championship Sloth Racing! <coughs> not what you were expecting? Don't let their appearance fool you. When these sloths get on the racetrack, look out! You're in for the most intense two feet of racing you've ever seen. Let's meet our four competitors. First up is Larry McLightning. Now, 
Everyone who thinks Larry is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! Next up we have Susie Swift. Everyone who thinks Susie is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! In the third starting spot is Bob Boomerang. If you think Bob is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! In our final spot is Frankie Too Fast. If you think Frankie is gonna win, stand up and shout as loud as you can! All right, our sloths are ready to race. Don't forget to cheer as loud as you can for your sloth. We're gonna start in three, two, one, and they're off! Frankie is battling for position. They're giving it all they've got today. Oh, I'm afraid to blink. It's total chaos. Oh, Larry makes a move. Look out. Oh, my. Oh, no. This is a record-setting pace. Susie almost wiped the out. The speed is unreal. They're neck and neck. Oh, it's definitely too close to call. What a great move. What is Bob thinking? It's definitely too close to call. Frankie is battling for position. They're giving it all they've got today. Whoa, I'm afraid to blink. It's total chaos. Larry makes a move. Look out. Oh, my. Oh, no. This is a record-setting pace. Susie almost wiped out. The speed is unreal. They're neck and neck. It's definitely too close to call. What a great move. What is Bob thinking? Oh, it's definitely too close to call. Oh, Larry makes a move. Look out. Wow. Larry McLightning wins a photo finish. Congrats to all you Larry fans out there. I don't know about you folks, but I was on the edge of my seat that entire race. Be sure to join us next time for more Sloth Racing Action! Alright, I hope you guys don't mind, but I like singing a lot. It's gonna be great. It's time for worship and I can't wait to sing nice and loud! Was that too much? Is that good? Dark.
I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. And you have been so, so kind to me. and girls, it's me, Teriyaki, and I was just cooking up something tasty for my restaurant, Nice Rice. Now today I'm also cooking up a special power verse for you to learn. The trouble is I'm famous for getting things mixed up, so I'm going to need your help getting it unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Always be each other's faults. Be patient with each other making allowance for humble and gentle because of your four to love Ephesians. Um, yes, this is not right. Very wrong, very mixed up. Kind of like that time I was trying to cook macaroni and cheese, but I accidentally used marshmallows and peas. Oh, that was bad. 
Anyway, I'm going to need your help getting this one unscrambled. Let's look at it together. Always be each other's fault. That's not right. Move it over. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for humble and gentle. Who are they? I don't even know those guys. Let's move those over. Because of your 4-2 love. What is 4-2 love? Which of these do you think belongs somewhere else? That's right! 4-2 goes at the end to make it... <coughs> Ephesians 4-2. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Always be something. Hmm. Humble and gentle. Yes, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for, hmm, what should go there? Ah, yes, each other's faults. Because of your love, Ephesians 4, 2. Ah, yes, that's it. I think we have it. Now let's try saying it all together. Everyone stand up on your feet and say it with me on the count of three. One, a two, a three. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Ephesians 4, 2. That's a great power verse. It reminds us of the importance of gentleness. Can you imagine if I tried to smash the eggs from my omelets with a hammer? The shells and yolk would be all mixed up and everywhere. It would be a nightmare. No, the recipe says I have to be gentle, as many other recipes do. And as Christians, we must be gentle as well with the words we say and the things we do. Let's try to say that power verse all together one more time on the count of three. So everyone stand up. Here we go. One, two, three. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Ephesians 4, 2. Great job, boys and girls. Now, I gotta get back to these chicken and waffles. Or was it a chimichanga? What's a chimichanga? I don't know. Anyway, customers are waiting. So until next time, this is Teriyaki saying, Ladles up. Oi. One day, Jesus was teaching a group of people all about God. Right in the middle of his teaching, a group of Pharisees showed up. Pharisees were the religious leaders of Jesus' day. They were the ones who were supposed to be setting the example for others to follow. Their way of doing things was considered the truly spiritual way. The Pharisees showed up with a woman. This woman had done some very bad things. She was being the girlfriend of some men who were already married. Not only was she sinning, but she was helping others to sin as well. That's pretty messed up. So, the religious people brought her to Jesus. One of the Pharisees said to Jesus, The law says we should stone her. What do you say? To stone someone meant that they took a bunch of large rocks and threw them at the person over and over until they died. Isn't that mean? These Pharisees wanted to deal with this woman very harshly. So, they asked Jesus, What do you say we are to do with her? They were trying to trap Jesus. They knew he was a man of love and compassion. They knew he was kind and gentle to others. So, what did Jesus do? He did nothing. He said nothing. Instead, he bent down and began to write in the dirt with his finger. The Bible doesn't say what he was writing, but when he was done, he looked up and said, Whichever one of you has never sinned, throw the first stone. Hmm, what do you think the Pharisees did? One by one, they began to drop their stones and walk away. Why do you think they walked away? It was because they knew that all of them had sinned. They didn't want that kind of judgment on themselves, so 
they weren't about to give that kind of judgment to the woman. Jesus wanted to display an attitude of grace and gentleness towards others, even those who had sinned. Instead of harsh punishment, Jesus forgave the woman. He gently spoke to the woman and said, Go and leave your life of sin. In our lesson today, we're going to learn how to have that same attitude towards others who have sinned. Instead of being a rock thrower, we're going to learn how to be a grace giver. Hey, boys and girls, we are picking back up in our lessons about the fruits of the Spirit. And today, we're going to talk about, and you have to say it just nice and calm, gentleness. Yes, we have to talk about gentleness today. It's a very important fruit. But before we talk about that, I want you to think for a second. What do you think the opposite of gentleness is? Go on, think about it for a second. And you're probably thinking, it's probably harsh. Yeah, harsh, rough, uh, coarse. That's a totally different word. But, you know, here's the thing. As Christians, we are supposed to sound like gentleness. We are to sound as if we are being nice and calm and helping and soothing instead of like those words you were just thinking about that meant the, ge the opposite of gentleness, like rough and coarse and hard and harsh and things like that. We're supposed to be the opposite of those words. We're supposed to say kind, loving things. And here's the thing, I'm going to teach you three important things about gentleness. So I want you to listen real carefully because the first thing I want to teach you about gentleness is, is that harsh, Words hurt, gentle words help. Have you ever been hurt by harsh words? I have been, I've definitely been hurt by harsh words. There's so many things you could tell people that would hurt their feelings and things like that. And, but here's the thing, have you ever been helped or have been encouraged by gentle words? I have definitely, of course. When, when did gentle words and kind words ever not be encouraging and ever not be helping? Gentle words help. And as Christians, it's our job to help, not to hurt. Kind of think of it like sandpaper. If I were to take sandpaper and rub it across my arm, that would hurt, wouldn't it? Of course. And meanwhile, why would I even rub sand, sandpaper on my arm? It's rough. It's coarse. And it's the same thing as if we're saying hurtful words. No, it may not scratch us physically, but it can still hurt our feelings. So when we say mean things and we say harsh things, we call people names or say that people can't do stuff, it's harsh and it hurts, not physically, but it, it hurts our feelings. It hurts inside, it hurts our heart. Here's the thing, gentle words are like a piece of silk. How many have ever seen silk before? It's so smooth, it's so gentle, it's so soft. It's the smoothest of materials ever out there. And if you rub that on your skin, it feels so nice because it's so nice and silky smooth. And that's what kind words are like. That's the kind of words we need to be saying to each other. Not sandpaper words, but we need to be saying silk words, saying things that uplift and encourage and things that are so kind and gentle words help others. They bless them and they encourage them. As Christians, I have a question. As Christians, should we use the sandpaper or should we use the silk? If you said silk, you're absolutely right. We need to use gentle words to lift others and help them up. Here's another thing I want you to know, the, our second point. Gentleness equals handle with care. How many of you have a baby brother or baby sister? I have a baby sister. Well, of course, she's all grown up now, but some of you might have a baby sister or baby brother that's still, you know, nice and young and baby-like, and you gotta help them and pick them up and everything like that. And, and of course, babies are so super, so, so super cute and everything like that, and they're so sweet, and, and they just, I mean, of course, they drool everywhere, and they go in the diapers and things like that. And, but here's the thing. Obviously, babies aren't super strong, of course, and you sometimes you have to help them hold their heads up because they can't hold their head up. There's, there's a lot of things that babies, as babies, can't really do right now. And here's the thing, if you were to hold a baby upside down, would that be gentle and handling with care? No, or what if, 
I know we will never do this to a child, but what if all of a sudden you just like, whee, you know, just swing the baby by the leg, whee, I got me. Obviously, at that point, we would have to call somebody because we'd become concerned with how you're handling a child, especially if you're holding them upside down and things like that. But how do you hold a baby? Very simple. If you don't know how to hold one, I'll teach you today. Here we go. Got to hold your arms like this, that way they're nestled right there, right there in the arm, and you're just gently rock them. And sometimes you want to sing a lullaby, lullaby, and good night. And you want to just, you know, you handle with care. You handle gently with care. That's, that's how you hold a baby. And as Christians, here's the thing. It's our responsibility to treat others with care. How do we do that? By being gentle in every situation with things that we say and with things that we do. We can't just be sort of gentle. Like, you know, I can be, you know, I like my baby brother, but you know, he's a doo-doo head. No, you, you can't, you can't be sort of gentle. You have to be gentle all the way. We can't be gentle sometimes. You have to be gentle all the time. As a matter of fact, it's our last point today. My gentleness should be evident to all. Everyone should be able to notice how gentle you are, how sweet you are, how kind you are. It should be clear that everything you say and everything that you do is gentle and helpful. That means you have to do what your mom tells you to do. If she tells you to take out the trash, take out the trash. It's no, but mom, I want to go play video games. No, you have to do what your mom says. You have to watch your tone of voice. I'm looking at some of you. You have to watch your tone of voice and you have to say it like you mean it. It's not just about saying nice and helpful things. It's important to say them kindly and sincerely and gently. So when mom asks you to take out the trash, it's not just, I'm taking out the file, I'll take out the trash. I'm just take out. It's, oh yeah, mom, I can definitely take out the trash. See how sincere and gentle that was instead of like, fine, I'll take out the trash. Look at that, you even scowl when you say, I'll take out the trash. Or when you say like, yeah, mom, I'll take out the trash. And you smile. See, it's not that hard to be gentle, to be kind, to be sincere. Gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit because like every fruit of the Spirit, gentleness is evidence of the Holy Spirit in your life. We need to be gentle so that others can see that we are Christians and see that God our Father is gentle too. See, the thing is, if you are all of a sudden acting like you're not gentle, they're going to think, well, that God that they serve must not be gentle. He must be mean just like that person. No, but if you are gentle and kind, then people see like, oh, you know what? I, I think the person, the God that they serve, that I, I think he's kind. I think he's gentle. I think he's sweet. See, it's all in what you say and all in what you do. So boys and girls, this week, Practice gentleness. Practice being kind. Practice being 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 soft like silk and not harsh like sandpaper. That's what this is all about. It's about being gentle, being kind, and being sweet. Not just sometimes, and not just to some people, but to everybody. Let's pray. Bow your head to close your eyes. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this message today. We thank you for the, the fruit that you've given us of gentleness. That it's better to be kind, to be sincere, to be gentle than it is to be harsh and rude and mean. We don't want to be like sandpaper. We want to be like silk. Soft, comforting, helpful words. So help us do that this week. Help us be like silk. Help us to be gentle. Help us to practice gentleness. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done. And God, we thank you for all that you're going to do. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Like I said yesterday, we're going to start a whole new unit, which means new games. Yes, Bryce? Maybe we could have Ken on Shoulders House done. He's pretty good at games. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. All right, guys. We're going to start with the relay race. Cameron, you're up first. Ready, set. Good job. Good. Come on, run. Faster. Come on, good job. Good job. You're doing it. amazing. Good job. Go, go. This next exercise needs everybody to partner up. Do you want to beat my partner? 
Sure, man. Thanks for picking me. You're an huge encourager. Absolutely, bro. <laughs>